Hello, everyone. This is your professor again, Danny Araneta Kabulay, on the course Recruitment and Selection. And this is now our video lecture for week number four on the topic Curriculum Vitae, a Powerful Tool in Recruitment. And this is now video number four, second to the last video for this week. So, let me ask you this question. What does the CV convey? Ano bang kinocommunicate ng curriculum vitae sa atin? Sa mga employers at recruiters? Bakit nila binabasa to? Ano bang implication nito? Marami pong ibig sabihin nito. Number one, it provides a comprehensive picture of a person's career and life. Kasi yung mga nilalagay natin sa CV, they imply a lot of things. Kaya pag nakita natin doon na yung isang tao, marami siyang pinag-aralan, aba, masipag mag-aral to. Okay? So, pinupuhunan, nag invest siya sa kanyang edukasyon, sa kanyang sarili. Kung siya ay graduate with honors, matataas ang grades niya, nako, that's a very good indication. Kasi ito ay nagpapakita ng kasipagan, katalinuhan, at pagtsatsaga. Matsaga siya eh. Kaya nakakuha siya ng ganung mga grades. So that means, kung matsaga ka sa school, there is a strong possibility magiging matsaga ka rin sa kumpanya. Kung lagi kang bagsak, lagi kang mababa ang grade, parang pabaya ka. No? So, baka mag-reflect din yan sa trabaho. Baka ganyan ka rin sa place of work. So again, those things are very important. Even yung extracurricular activities, you're engaged in sports, or mahilig kang sumali sa mga competition, you're competitive. So that speaks a lot about yourself, your character, your dynamism. Okay? So it tells about your values also. So yung buhay mo ay parang sinasalamin ng body data mo. Ano ba yung mga nagawa mo na sa buhay mo so far? Okay? Kapag napakanipis ng body data mo, halos wala kang nagawa, parang, you know, it's a little bit boring and dull, okay? So, you're giving that kind of impression. Kaya maganda kung ating by data ay maraming laman at saka interesting yung laman related to career, okay? Focus sa career. Second, reason, second thing that the CV conveys or communicates to recruiters, it determines whether or not a person is qualified for the job he or she is applying for. So, makikita natin, based on the job specifications, ano bang hinahanap ng employer? Nasa iyo ba yung mga katangian na yun? Let's start with the basic qualification, like gender, age, education, even your location, kung saan ka nakatira. Those are basic stuff. Okay? Now, third thing that is communicated by the CV, it enumerates a person's set of competencies and skills. Yung mga kagalingan natin, saan tayo mahusay? Because those are the skills we're going to offer, we're going to contribute to the company that is going to hire us. Okay? So very important na our CV will tell the whole world what are our skills and competencies. You should highlight that in your CV. And then number four, the CV conveys a person's goals and aspirations. Gusto natin i-hire yung mga taong may konting ambisyon naman. Hindi naman yung over-ambitious but may mga pangarap. Kasi ang isang company, may pangarap din ng company. Tignan natin kung nagtutugma yung pangarap ng company at yung pangarap ng empleyado. Paano ba makakatulong ang company sa pangarap ng empleyado? Or vice versa, pa paano ba makakatulong ang isang empleyado para matapad din yung pangarap ng company? It works both ways. Okay, that's the fourth thing that the CV conveys or communicates. Finally, the fifth one, it mirrors many innermost values of the person. Ano yung mga katangian mo, mga values mo, mga ugali mo? Okay, because the values of the applicant and the values of the company hiring should match. If the company values honesty, tapos nakita nila na yung bio data mo puro Mali-mali ang sinulat mo doon. Puro kasinungalingan. You're not honest. So, obviously, honesty is not one of your values. Accuracy is one of the values of the company. Eh, yung bio data mo, ang daming grammatical errors. Maraming mga mali-mali. Okay? It's not accurate. So, again, hindi nagtutugma. Neatness is one of the orderliness, cleanliness, neatness are one of the value, some of the values of the company. Pero yung bayo dito mo, lukot-lukot, may mancha, may punit, pangit yung papel, luma, madumi. So, wala ka nung values ng company. 
hindi ka bagay. Okay? So again, that's what the CV conveys. Okay, remember? It conveys that it provides a comprehensive picture of a person's career and life. It determines whether or not a person is qualified for the job he or she is applying for. It enumerates a person's set of competencies and skills. It conveys a person's goals and aspirations. And finally, it mirrors many innermost values. Okay? Now, here is an example of CV assessment. Pag sinabi natin CV assessment, tandaan natin, when a recruiter or employer advertises job openings, no? Uh, the potential applicant submits no potential applicants submit their bio data okay or cvs either personally by mail or online upon reaching the deadline for submission for cvs all documents are acknowledged and screened based on the basic job specification as advertised Applicants whose qualifications do not fit the job specifications are not shortlisted. Only shortlisted applicants are invited for the initial interview. This is also called the preliminary interview. That means kung wala sa yung qualifications na hinahanap nila, hindi ka nila iinbitahin para ma-interview. Maybe they will put your file in the active file. Hindi naman nila ilalagay sa basura, no? Uh, they will put it in the active file. Just in case na mayroong suitable opening for you. Okay? Ano ba ang procedure pag ginawa natin itong CV assessment? Number one, you have to refer to the job specification in developing the CV assessment matrix. Input the names of the applicants whose CVs will be subjected to assessment. And then, assign scores. Maybe 1 kapag meron siya, 0 kapag wala siya nung katangian na yun. Okay? Or remarks, yes or no, based on the contents of the individual CVs of the applicants. Determine the number of applicants to be included in the shortlist. Gusto mo mag-interview ng lima, ng sampu. Therefore, ang iimbitahin mo lang yung top 5 or top 10. Bahala kayo sa number kung anong gusto nyo. No? Kung, depende sa time at availability rin ng mga managers na mag interview Get the shortlist approved. Kailangan aprobahan siya ng HR manager. Na, oh, sige, okay na. Limang ating imbitahin for interview. Okay, so we now contact the five applicants. Okay, that's an example. Before you send out the applicants, the invitation for the initial interview, you must get approval first. Now, five is the number. So, let us look at a particular case study. Wanted, grocery bagger. Okay, so Pure Gold Malabon has a job opening for a grocery bagger next month. So, nag-advertise sila. So, may mga nag-apply. The job specification states, ito daw yung kailangan, male or female, 18 to 26 years old, at least high school graduate, a resident of Northern Metro Manila. That means, Caloocan, Malabon, Navotas, Valenzuela, otherwise known as Kamanava, and of course, Quezon City. Kasi yan yung mga siyudad ng Metro Manila na, na nasa Norte. Okay. Here is your task. Develop a CV assessment matrix based on the job specification to determine the initial shortlist. Okay? So, yan ang gagawin nyo. Develop a CV assessment matrix based on the job specification to determine the initial shortlist. Ano bang gagawin natin? Okay? Tignan natin ang mga aplikante. Si Gregory Policarpio. Male. 22 years old, education, is first year college, resident siya ng Navotas. So, pasok siya. Pag tinignan natin yung ating matrix, yes sa gender, yes sa age, yes sa education, yes din sa Navotas. Therefore, Gregory Policarpio is shortlisted. Okay, our second applicant is Beatrice Wu. Okay, Beatrice is female, yes, okay siya. 29 years old, mm, no, kasi hanggang 26 ang preference nila. Okay, education, second year college, yes. She is a resident of Caloocan, yes. 
So she's not going to be shortlisted because she's over age already. Now let's go to the third applicant, Ronald Kilala. Gender male, yes. Age 18, yes. Education, high school graduate, yes. Residence, Malabon, yes. So Ronald Kilala will be shortlisted and he will be invited to the preliminary interview. The last applicant is Martin Serapio. Gender, male, age 24, yes, parehong yes yon. Education, third year college, yes. Residence, QC or Quezon City. So, Martin Serapio will also be invited for the initial interview. He is also going to be shortlisted. So, out of the four applicants, tatlo ang masyo-shortlist. Yung isa, hindi siya i-invite in for the initial interview. Kasi over age. Okay? That's how you do the assessment. Okay? So, meron tayong sample ng matrix. Makikita natin yan sa PowerPoint. Okay. Now, here are the questions that I want you to answer in the comment section below. Why do you think the job specification indicated the preferred age of 18 to 26 years old? Bakit ayaw nila ng mas matanda sa 26? Ano kaya ang rationale or dahilan nito? Please answer in the comments below, comment section below. Answer Bakit ayaw ng pure gold ng mas matanda sa 26 ang bagger? Gusto nilang age ay 18 to 26. Can you, can you guess the reason? Okay. Now, the second question is hypothetical. If the company advertised for 10 grocery baggers, hindi lang isa, okay? Sampu ang iya-hire nila. And out of 30 applicants, based on their CVs, Pito lang ang na-shortlist, pito lang ang qualified. E sampo ang kailangan. Paano yan? What should the HR department do? Okay. Number one, advertise again so they can attract more qualified applicants. Okay? Yan bang gagawin mo? Or, just settle for those in the pool of applicants, not shortlisted. Doon sa 30, Merong 23 doon na hindi qualified. Pili ka na lang doon ng tatlo. Baka sakali pwede na yon. Yun ba ang gusto mong gawin? Okay. So the choice is to advertise again or pumili ka na lang doon sa mga hindi qualified. What is your choice? Please write your answers in the comment section below. Okay? So this ends now our video number 4 for week 4. There's one more video left, okay? So don't forget to watch that. That's the last one for this week. Okay, see you around.